This is different for me because I just don't try anything. If I it's know, not I know. Breaded, You're very reserved. It's not a breaded chicken you know, finger. I'm not you know, like when it. we go out to eat and stuff like that, yeah. you guys are like, well, what do you want to eat? We're like, you guys choose, right, you know, because right, we are right. kind of adventurous and we I'm, know Pastor Sherrod is just not. Once you put your uh, tomatoes, your olive tapenade, put all that together, you want about a tablespoon and a half of parsley, a tablespoon and a half of mint. You're gonna take your pepper, about a tablespoon, and a table, or a teaspoon rather, and a teaspoon of salt in a separate bowl, you may whisk it, lemon, olive oil. This is about six tablespoons of olive oil. That's about two tablespoons of lemon. You wanna mix this together. Pour that over the top. And mix this up. Make sure it's very well mixed. This is another dish that the more it sits, mm -hmm. the better it gets. I was just gonna ask you guys, what, um, now that you're kind of like on this new journey, health and fitness and that type of thing, what has been the hardest habit or craving to kick in terms of food for you guys? Like, has there been one thing that you guys have really struggled with, you know, giving up or kicking that type of thing? Maybe there's more than one. <laughs> <laughs> um. You know, for me, I think it's uh, it's my favorite food, which is ice cream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, because uh, I grew up um, in a, you know, again, it boils down like your family. You know, I grew up in a family where we always had ice cream. Um, and I just love ice cream. Even my kids at school, when I would teach, they knew Mr. Mays loved ice cream in all different flavors, mainly Blue Bell ice cream, the best ice cream in the country, by the way. <laughs> Uh, scratch that, they're not paying us. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Blue Bell is not paying us. <laughs> we're going we're to bleep that out. <laughs> right. uh, but I'm adding a quarter cup of, again, goat cheese. So ice cream is a big one for me. For me, it's just sweets. I love candy. I love soda. I love McDonald's french fries. I love sweet tea. Anything sweet and salty, I love it. So uh, it's just sweets in general. Gotcha. Yeah. How about for you, babe? I'm a I'm salty, sweet. I mean, that's it's the you know the trifecta is fatty, sugary, mm -hmm. and salty. Mm -hmm. Those are the three things that mess you up, yeah. and that's the problem. You know, it's hard to get rid of that. But believe it or not, um, it's funny because the less sweets that I have, the more sweet everything is when I taste it again. It's like, yeah. it's like, oh my gosh, I did not know how sweet wow. this really was. Because your, your, your taste buds yes. will change. Yes, very much so. Hi, this is Dr. Gene Herndon of Leadership Uncensored. And I want to take a moment to share with you about a weekly cast that we're going to do called M4 or Monday Morning Master's Mind. And it will be a short, uh, powerful, practical leadership insight that you can apply to your ministry, uh, to your business. And our goal and our purpose is to give you the confidence, the clarity, and the tools to help you to lead at the next level. And so what we have done is if you are interested in that podcast, please sign up on our website. If you go to geneherndon.com, put your information in there. Every Monday morning, uh, you will receive an email that will have the link to that particular uh, broadcast. And I guarantee you it'll be a blessing to you. And I guarantee you it'll bring value uh, to your ministry and to your business. We understand the challenges that people face when you're a Christian business or in a Christian ministry. And so we want to make sure that we're providing the best help that we can uh, to be a blessing to you. Until we see you, God bless you, and we'll see you on the other side. So you just want to make sure with this that it's all evenly mixed. What together. was that last ingredient you put the white? That was, Is that cheese? That was goat cheese. Yep. Oh, same thing. Uh, that looks really healthy. 
You know, it's funny, it is. Um, I think as ministers, we struggle sometimes um, because we have to eat healthy and we have to take care of our bodies. This race that we're in, yeah. um, you know, God's got to, he's, he's got to have something to work with. And so, um, so is this sort of cold? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Can be cold room temperature. It's very good. I like it. I love that, that dressing. What do you think? Yeah. It's good. Oh yeah. And like as it sits, it gets better and better. Um, but Very good. when we were prepping for the show, I was doing some research and I was thinking about like our situation and the fact that initially when we started down this road of um, meal prepping, I was kind of apprehensive mm -hmm. because I felt like we already struggled for time to yeah. do things besides the things we were already doing. And I was thinking like, how are we going to meal prep and do all of these things? Like we just don't have the time. And I think that's one of the biggest things that people face is yeah. just not having time being busy. You, you know, you're a business owner, you're a pastor, whatever it is, you're a full-time mom, like you're busy, you have yeah. a lot going on. So how do I fit this into my schedule? Um, and so when I was doing some research, I was reading and I was shocked at like some of the statistics that, um, was dealing with like senior leaders and ministers and pastors, people in ministry. Um, and I just jotted down a couple. And one of the things is 44% of pastors do not take a regular day off. 90% um, feel fatigue and worn out every week. 75% of pastors report being extremely stressed or highly stressed. And um, it was like over 50% of pastors that worked between 50 to 75 hours a week. Um, and it was just sharing other things about them not having time to, you know, do personal development and devotional where the only time they're in the Bible is when they're preparing for a sermon. Um, that they don't really have anyone that they can reach out to from like a mentor or a spiritual parent standpoint. Um, um, you know, they went to Bible college and they feel like nothing that they learned in Bible college prepared them for actually being in ministry. So wasn't all of these things. something that said like 80% of them said if they could do something else, they would. They would. Oh, wow. Yeah, that they would. So they felt like if they, if they felt like if they could do something else, they'd go to. That they would. They would leave ministry and go do yeah. something else. It was over 50% that felt like uh, ministry negatively impacted their family mm -hmm. from their wife to their kids because they're working so hard. They're under so much pressure. They can't give the best to their family when they have nothing left. So as we were kind of talking about mm -hmm. that, you know, we were sharing that we know um, of a lot of ministers that, you know, you just don't have the time. You're under a lot of pressure, but it's like what you don't do because you don't think you have time is actually what you need to do to save right. your life. Right. Exactly. Do you understand right. what I'm saying? And really looking at that big picture. And for us, it was one of those things where that was the motivation to like, we may not have the time, but we're going to find time. This is a priority. So if we need to cut something else, yeah. we're going to cut something else so that we can focus on this. This. Is, this is not a sprint. It's right. a marathon. Oh, yeah. And you got to have, you got to have what's needed. Um, to finish your course. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember where Paul was talking about Epaphroditus and he said, um, he said he's, he's, on, he's sick unto death. Mm -hmm. And he goes on to explain the reason why he's sick unto death is because he's trying to pick up the slack of what y'all were supposed yeah. to do. And, and when we're in ministry, what other people are supposed to do, ministry of help, support. Uh, that was one of the reasons why, because we started a ministerial association uh, called Word and Spirit International, and it's designed to help ministers who um, either want to get into ministry or maybe already in ministry, but want to have help, tools, resources, but not the ethereal stuff, but the real practical stuff of how to go further, faster, if you will, because it's not easy. And to not have the ability to have people that are pouring into you, that really want to help you, because there's a lot of ministerial associations, all they care about is you being a part of them. Yeah. Right. But they're really not bringing much to the table right. to keep you help, you know, healthy and help and help you do the things that's on your life. And, you know, it's, it's really interesting, but we have such a heart for that because ministry is tough. Yeah. yeah. And I wouldn't trade it for the world, but it's not easy. No. And it's not for everybody.
And you had mentioned to me, you were saying, you know, sometimes I think us as ministers, like we're doing God's work and we think that, you know, he'll sustain, he'll sustain us right. and that, you know, we could just do it by faith and we can eat however we want to eat, however late at night all the time. And, right. you know, I'm doing God's work, so he's going to take care of me, but it doesn't necessarily work like that. Yes, he's going to take care of us, but we have to do our part in the natural. And so our physical bodies, um, we have to take care of. Mm -hmm. and, and you were sharing some things Paul about. Said. The, the work of the ministry. Right. He said, this is why he's sick unto death. Yeah. Right. So God's not going to keep you. If you're unhealthy, he's not going to override what you have done. Right. You've got to take care of your temple exactly. and be available for kingdom purpose. Yes. Right. And, and so, you know, that's just one of those things for us is why we said we may not have uh, a desire to eat all of these things all the time, mm -hmm. but there are flavorful ways to get certain types of things into our diet exactly. and to make sure that uh, we're eating as healthy as we can. Hey y'all, it's Shayna from At The Tables with The Herndons. I just want to thank you guys so much for tuning into our episodes. I pray that you guys are really enjoying this special episode that we're sharing on health and fitness and just living a healthy lifestyle. This is not for people that may be overweight um, or people that struggle with food. This is for everybody. And this is about living a healthy lifestyle. It's not about losing weight per se. You can be a skinny person and still be able to live a healthy lifestyle and to apply a lot of the things that we're sharing with you. So we want to engage you and have you be a part of this movement with us. What we want to do is as you guys are meal prepping or maybe you're at the gym working out or just doing something that you enjoy, we want you to take pictures and we want you to tag the At The Table With The Herndons Facebook page and then hashtag snatch it back. And really what hashtag snatch it back means is we're just going to take responsibility and be accountable for our life and knowing that we're not going to allow food to rule us, we're not going to allow bad behaviors to rule us and take over our lives lives and that we truly are not a victim in this. Snatch It Back is all about bringing yourself back centered, being able to be in a place where you can do the things that God has called you to do and to run the race that he set before you, whether you're a Christian business owner or you're a senior pastor, or maybe you just, you go to church and maybe you're a full-time mom. And so we all have the ability to snatch it back and to bring our lives back to where it needs to be so that we can truly be at a place where we're available and ready to do kingdom business. So once again, just share your picture share your comments if there's anything that you want to know or any questions that you have you can just drop it below this video and we're just so blessed to have you be a part of this journey with us as we move forward in our health journey we just pray and wish you the best and uh, from our table to yours we will see you next time stay tuned for future episodes we love you and god bless yeah. And I, I like what uh, Pastor Shana said. We really do make time for what we want. So, it, you know, we will, we need to, like you said, set something aside so we can make time for what's important, what we need. Yeah. Sacrifice that meeting. Yeah. Sacrifice exactly. that, There's you know, don't you sacrifice your life and your health. And, you know, like your family needs you, your ministry needs you. So we do make time for what's important to us. And it's a lie we tell ourselves that we don't really have the time. Yeah. You have the time. We do. You know, you just need to prioritize what's important to you and like you were talking about when you have the right motivation mm -hmm. you're gonna do it like there's no way that you're not going to do it because you have the right motivation and it's strong enough to defy everything else that's going on that is pulling because you know in ministry everybody's pulling exactly. everybody's biting for your time you know there's 24 hours a day and you know you need 28 to accomplish everything and it's just like it doesn't happen mm -hmm. so and really if you prioritize your time you look at 168 hours a week if you really sit down and look at what you do on a weekly basis, you'll find that you have time available. Oh, yeah. It's all a matter of what you're doing with that time. You'll take some TV time and you'll start using it for right. what you use to binge watch. Exactly. You can take that time to food prep. Exactly, it's amazing you know? how much time we waste watching we, TV. We put an app on our phone called Moment, M-O-M-E-N-T, mm -hmm. -E and it tells you how many times you pick up your phone, yeah. how long you've been on it, yeah. and you'd be shocked yeah. when you add it up over a whole week. Yeah how much time is spent. Oh, and it'll check you too. It'll interrupt whatever you're looking at and be like, um, you missed your goal for today. You opened your phone yeah. 41 times. It'll, it'll drop you know, you, next to tomorrow, you need to get it down to 30. Yeah. So it'll check you and just yeah. interrupt you. So it's it's been a, a conscious thing yeah. that we're doing. Because you can't correct what you're not conscious of. Right. That's true. And, and it's, like, it's like the frog in the boiling water. Mm -hmm. Put a frog in a pot of water, you turn the heat up, he'll cook himself, right? Because right? it's gradual. But if it's hot, if there's some shock to it, he jumps right out. And if you don't have that in your own 
you know, life to get you where you need to be, yeah. you'll just eventually cook yourself, not realizing yeah. the time. So I have put some of the tabbouleh salad, I put some of the roasted beet salad, and you just grab yourself a couple of these, and you wanna ladle some of the juice over top. Gotta get the juice, y'all. All the flavors. And those uh, lemons become really tender and sweet where you can almost eat it. But, and it doesn't taste like how, you know, it's not, yeah, like how a raw lemon tastes. So it's pretty delicious. It looks delicious. And there you have it. So you've got your lemon um, herb chicken with your roasted beet salad and your tabbouleh salad and meal prep. Boom. First meal, done. done. Stick that puppy in the fridge, Stick it in and the by fridge. tomorrow, it'll be even better than it is uh, right now. You can eat this hot, the tabbouleh part if you want. Um, we kind of prefer cold, so we'll take that out, mm -hmm. put it in the microwave, and then put it back in, and you got yourself a full, complete meal. Wow. Awesome. All right, well, we will see you in the next part our of this episode, part. our last part. Uh, where we're going to talk about some healthy choices and healthy alternatives uh, to make better decisions concerning uh, food. So again, we love you. God bless you. And from our table to yours, we'll see you next week. Bye guys. We would love for you to leave some comments, likes, shares. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below the videos. We'd love to interact with you. If you want any copies of our recipes, just ask. Anything you need from us, we are more than happy to be a blessing to you. Please make sure that you support all that we're trying to do because it's not easy doing what we do. And so when we see likes and we see shares, it sends us a signal, that tells us that you like what we're doing and that you want more of it. We want to know some of the things that you guys are dealing with and the things that you would like us to talk about, you know, whether it's different subjects or even foods that you would like to see on the show. So we love you guys from our table to yours. We will see you next time and God bless. The advice that I got from a guy who was 50 something years old, um, looked like an Avenger. And I asked him, I said, hey, what's the one thing you would tell a struggling guy, um, you know, with their weight? And he said, how bad do you want it?